You are now watching the Amazing Mets pregame show with your hosts, Rob and CP. Let's go, Mets! Let's go, Mets! Let's go, Mets! Let's go, Mets! What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to the Amazing Mets pregame show. I am solo for just a little bit. CP will be here in just a little bit. He's got some things to do, but I'm going to hold it down for you until he pops up and we give our, re our preview of the Mets and Pirates game tonight and, of course, the series as well. So the Mets are coming off three series wins in a row and looking for a fourth series win in a row and keeping the good times rolling right after the Dwight Gooden number retirement ceremony. Nice win to win the series against the Royals. And now the 11-5 and five Pirates, young, good team. And the Mets have been playing well against good teams. Reds, Braves, Royals. And now we got another up-and-coming young team in the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're playing extremely well. If it wasn't for Bednard blowing some games, they might be 13 wins, 14 wins in into the season, but they're 11 and 5 right now. The Mets do have a tough task in this three game set against the Pittsburgh Pirates before they head up on the West Coast trip against the Dodgers and the Giants. But before we get started with today's game, hit on that like button, guys. Make sure you get that likes in. The more likes we get, guys, the more it goes out to the Mets community on YouTube. For Mets fans who want to see this type of content, so make sure you do that. If you're on my channel or CPs, please hit on that like button, guys. So here we go. Adrian Hauser had a rough performance last time out. You want to see a bounce back performance by him. We're facing the lefty Martin Perez, who... The Mets this year has been pretty decent against Mets pitching, I'm um, assuming left-handed pitching, unlike they were last year. So good news is, as M M uh, Syracuse, New York says right now, <laughs> Lindor is batting right-handed. So everybody, that means it should be a good day, Francisco Lindor. So I like the lineup tonight. I do like Tyron Taylor being the DH. I do like Beatty Alvarez behind Pete Alonso. I love this lineup, one through six. Shoot, what the hell with it? One through seven is badass. Let's be honest about that. I really like this lineup, one through seven. Just imagine, I know it's a couple of probably a few weeks, maybe a week or two before J.D. Martinez pops up somewhere. But imagine J.D. Martinez in a lineup that has a hot baby who has a... a uh, a guy who looked like he's coming out of it a little bit in Francisco Alvarez. Jeff McNeil has bounced out of it. Alonzo has been showing that major power. I think Lindor is going to start getting hot over the next couple of weeks. He always starts picking it up the end of April into May. That's what he usually does. Marte has been good, and we know what Nimmo has done. Just how – look how this lineup, without J.D. Martinez, with the, inf, with the, the, the question mark of DH, one through seven – is a pretty solid lineup. You should win games with this lineup. It's just that simple. The pitching, for the most part, has been holding it down. The offense has been picking, picking up the pitching big time. But that's what I like to see. I want to see picking up your teammates, picking up the pitching, picking up the offense when we need to do so. And listen, the pitcher of Pirates is a good young, young team. You know what? They can score runs. Their pitching is solid, but it's not great. The Mets offense needs to take advantage of a decent pitching rotation. But I think in this series, the Mets have the, the matchup, the pitching matchups. I think it uh, favors the Mets a little bit more. So what do I want to see? I want to see Adrian Hauser pick up where he pick up where he had his first start and not his last start. He's got to be that innings guy. I need I need Adrian Hauser, who is the workhorse of this rotation. I need six innings from him. We keep, can't keep on using out A bullpen arms every single day and we get stuck in a situation where game one of the Braves where we're using our B and C to survive the game and win it. So let's see if we can get a nice performance from Adrian Hauser. He's probably going to give up some runs. The Pirates are a good hitting team. Adrian Hauser isn't a guy who's blowing people away. He pitches the contact. The problem with his last start was that he was walking too many guys. He was all over the place. He was around the plate 
but wasn't pitching the contact. It seems like he was striving for more strikeouts in that in that game than anything else. So, Adrian Hauser, we need a bounce back performance from you. Again, I know people are complaining about Harrison Bader, who's been picking it up batting wise. He's batting 300 at this point right now, quietly batting 300. Not a lot of talk about him, even though he helped us win a game yesterday. But Harrison Bader has, is coming on. And I, I tell you this over and over again. I said this on the round table last night. Harrison Bader is the guy you want in big games, in clutch performances. Again, I always bring back the postseason, the playoff series he had with the Yankees. He was the only one that, that showed up for the Yankees. This guy, when you need him most, he will come through. I promise you that. If he remains healthy, I truly believe he will be a key part of this lineup when the going gets tough. And I'm not just talking about the postseason. You got to get there first. You got to look at the big games at the right times. I, I want Harrison Bader in those spots. Obviously, you want the Alonzos, the Lindors, the Bates, Alvarez. But watch Bader. In big spots, he will be there. So I'm going to check the, the comments really quick. Pete Neen, player of the week. Yes, I've seen that. That's always great. Uh, Lane, I'm not in New York anymore. I, I moved. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in Florida, unfortunately. Well, well, I think explosive. I think that's the big reason why, even though you did give him $10 million, that's the big reason why Tyron Taylor is a part of this team and was traded with Adrian Hauser. Because when you use Bader, in the right spots, he will be a good player for us. That's the important thing. When people are like, why did you why did you get Harrison Bader? He's not a good bat. Well, because you have Tyron Taylor, who's a better bat. And if you play these guys enough, they're gonna pick up off each other. That's just good overall managing of a roster from David Stearns. Because we killed David Stearns this offseason by signing 47 relievers and you know five number three starters and, you know, guys that shouldn't be starting on some teams but are on others. You got to remember, the Taylor-Bader combination, let's be honest, it's kind of sexy because I like it this way because I'm sick and tired of giving guys jobs and you have no backup plan if it goes south. You saw what happened when Bader was struggling in the first week of the season. Who was doing the job? Tyron Taylor. Now, Tyron Taylor is not a guy that I want to play. Now, you need a really good lineup to have Bader or Tyron Taylor as your everyday guy in center field. When Lindor, Alonzo, McNeil, Marte, Nimmo do their job, it's irrelevant who is in center field. As long as they got a good glove, we shouldn't be talking about Tyron Taylor and Harrison Bader messing up in big spots. That's the bottom of the lineup. They come through sporadically, occasionally. If your one through six isn't getting the job done, why get mid for the seven through nine guys who are not supposed to be the guys that get it done? Now, occasionally they will. You know, like Bader got that 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 that's that that grounder to get that extra run in or that 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 first run in, right? It's it's you can't look at the seven, eight, and nine guys and say, well, look at these guys. Why why ain't they doing the job? Well, if one through six is not doing the job, then you're probably not winning ball games. You can't rely on Bader and Taylor and guys like that to do the job. And it seems like people are getting pissed off by that. The reason why people were getting pissed off with Bader early in the season, the first like six or seven games, because Marte wasn't doing well. Beatty didn't really pick it up as of yet. Nimmo was struggling. Lindor was struggling. That's why people were talking about Bader. But guess what? When Alonzo started to pick up, Marte, Nimmo, Al Alonzo, Beatty, when they started to pick up and those guys were doing their job, guess what? There was less questions about Bader. You know why? Because he makes every play in the outfield. He makes your outfield defense better. Right? That's the important part here. Uh, let me check easy. The, the, look, 
I want Nimmo to play the field. I'm sick and tired of people saying, oh, let Nimmo DH a little bit more. No, no. Listen, you're paying Nimmo to play every day as a, an outfielder and as a batter. All right. If we're going to DH him all, almost a lot, then what wh what is the point? Like, it's not like Nimmo's playing center field where he's got he's got to cover more ground. He's playing left field. He's standing around more times than he actually is running to the gap, the left center field gap. Let's be honest. So, I like Nimmo in left field. I've said this for a while. I don't care what the defensive metrics say about Brandon Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo is not a center fielder. He's not. He 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 can be a great left fielder and a good center fielder. Right? Nimmo plays too deep as a center fielder that hurts him on, on base hits up the middle trying to throw out runners because he has a terrible arm. His metrics show that he's a really good center fielder, but because he plays so deep, of course he's going to get to these gap-to-gap -gap balls, these deep fly balls to center field because he doesn't have to move that much. And he, he is better coming in on balls than going back on balls. When they changed that analytically, it changed everything for him. Him going back, him going to left field makes him a near elite left fielder because he's covering less ground, because his arm is not going to be worrisome throwing out runners, because left field is a lot easier throwing home than it is right or center field. I like Nimmo in left field. And DNH in him once or twice a week, I get it because they want to keep Nimmo healthy. That's important. So that's where we are right now. Give me one second. Let me just check the comments really quick, guys. Yes, I do apologize about the six and eight. Uh that's on me, Rodolfo. I appreciate you uh noticing that. Um I had a I, I just got home like 10 minutes ago, so I tried to put the lineup quickly together, and, of course, I screwed up the – hey, listen, I have said this all the time. If there's not a typo in the background, then you worry about me. <laughs> but, Rodolfo, I do appreciate that. I do apologize for the misprint. Explosive Islanders need two points tonight. I don't care. I'm a Ranger fan. We're in the playoffs regardless of the Islanders. I'm sorry. I know there's some Islander fans here that probably don't like me right now. But, hey, good luck to the Islanders, I guess. But <laughs> uh, who said it? Who the hell said it? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mendoza. D, you got to give credit to Mendoza. I'm glad you brought that up because yesterday on the roundtable, there's credit going around everywhere. Budo and other players. And Budo deserves it, obviously. But there's, there's credit going around all around the team. Mendoza deserves credit because one in five start. Everybody was calling for Mendoza's head. Mendoza kept his cool and fixed whatever was going on behind the scenes. He took care of business. And his moves have been better. His bullpen decisions have been better. His lineup construction, even though we're complaining about Taylor or DH or Bader playing in center field or Nimmo not DH and all that fun stuff, the point, the fact of the matter is, the Mets are winning ballgames. They're winning series with the lineups Mendoza's putting out there. They're scoring runs. So Mendoza's doing something right. And for a first-time manager, it's a good sign for our New York Mets. All right, guys, let me just uh, double check. I got you, Easy. I got you. Easy? Most, I'm sorry, uh, Ricardo? Most likely, buddy. Most likely. Yeah, Budo's going to be here long term. I have no problem with that. D Rangers, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Mendoza's letting him play. You know what I like about Mendoza? He's more of a player's manager, but in a, if you don't do your job, I will replace you type of way. Like, I respect your play, but if you're not doing your job, guess what? Next man up. And that's what I like about that. Like, when Beatty, I think Mendoza, what he did, Early on with Beatty in the first two series of the year, when Beatty had that terrible game defensively and offensively, guess what happened? And go back to the Brewer series. Game one, didn't play well defensively, looked overmatched at the plate 
Game two, guess what happened? He sat his ass on the bench. If that didn't happen, Beatty wouldn't be doing what he's doing right now, in my opinion. So Mendoza played that perfectly. And I appreciate the fact that Mendoza is not afraid, young player or veteran. If you're not doing your job, guess what? You're going to sit your ass down and somebody else is going to take your spot. If you're not doing anything off the bench, if you're not doing anything in the bullpen, you will be DFA'd. You will be replaced by another player. I love it. <laughs> D says uh, Purple Power. Yes, Mets, Knicks, man. I, I do. I know. I appreciate that. Uh, somebody already told me. Oh, wait, we got some good news here. We got our boy, CP's in the house. That's what I'm talking about. With the glasses, so you know we got his tan. We like that. So, CP, <laughs> what's up, boy? Can you hear me? Absolutely. Strictly business, man. Strictly business, just like oh. today. Get a win game one against the Pirates. Sorry I'm a little bit late to the party. It's all good. So um, I, everybody's talking about the Mets are seven and eight, not six and eight. But you know, if I don't do a typo in the background, we're not doing something right. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, Chris, I, I already went on for uh, 15 minutes. So say what you want to say to start up uh, what you want to talk about. No, I think that this is a great lineup today, and um, it's it, Adrian Hauser is on the mound. He he obviously uh, did fare well in the last outing against Atlanta. I think he does much better today. Listen, the Pittsburgh Pirates are no joke, right? They have a uh, pretty decent record so far, 11-5, I believe. They're playing really good baseball. Just took a series against the Phillies. Can't take them lightly. But I love this aggressive lineup that Carlos Mendoza trotted out there today. Absolutely playing no games, wasting no time. Let's set the tone early for the series, just like they did against the Royals, win game one, and then the rest of the series comes easy after that. It allows you a little bit more room for error. So uh, just on the lineup piece, I love the lineup, and I'm sure you already talked about that already on the stream. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, oh, hold on a second. I'm sorry about that, guys. My, my computer went crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I lost everything. Tony, the typo just messed up everything. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. You know, I talked about I like I like this lineup. Look at one through seven. This is without J.D. Martinez. One through seven, as I said, it, it looks – it's sexy. It's a sexy lineup because everybody's doing their job right now. Alvarez is starting to come along a little bit. Lindor's batting righty today with the lefty Martin Perez uh, on the mound. So you already know that Lindor is going to do good. Like, it's just common sense. You know, if somebody can beat in his head to be a right-handed batter all the time, maybe we'll have something even better. But I do like this lineup a lot because um, I, I just like the depth in it now. You know, when these guys get going and they go going at the same time, this is a dangerous lineup. We've been scoring a ton of runs. I know yesterday was a 2-1 game that, you know, happens. But we've been scoring runs, and I love it because we've been picking up our pitching that hasn't been great, even though – Buddha was good. Severino was solid. But, you know, I do like the fact that this lineup, and like you said, it's aggressive. And why not? Go out in game one. Look, when you win game one of the series, it's like house money after that because you got two chances to win a series. So much and you can get, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's what I like about this a lot because I feel like they're getting more aggressive and they're not timid. Like the first two series of the year, Mendoza was kind of feeling out the team. It felt like he was making timid moves, wasn't making those aggressive bullpen changes, those aggressive lineup changes. Now, it seems like he's on a roll right now. And as I said yesterday on the round table, you got to give Mendoza a lot of credit because he deserves a lot of credit because this team could be a disaster right now. And he turned it around after that one in five, three series wins in a row. And going for our fort, Chris. So um, I wanted to ask you, a lot of talk is about, you know, why, you know, with Nimmo not dh in enough. I, I think Easy was the one that said it in the chat. Uh, do you like the combination of, like, where they're mixing around with the DH, maybe play Nimmo a little bit more than DH and put Taylor and Bader in the outfield? What do you think about that? Yeah, first of all, I got to give a shout out to Harrison Bader, right? Because he's just been outperforming everything that I've been saying about him. Obviously, um, the the run uh, or the I guess swinging bunt day um, yesterday in the game, which was uh, provided the Mets a nice little, I believe, was that an insurance run at the time? No, that was the first run. So that was the first run of the game. Yeah, he's 
hitting 304. He, he's he's performing fine. Um, I think I like the merry-go-round that the Mets have in the outfield right now. And I think that regardless, like we saw Marte DHing here just recently. Now we see Tyrone Taylor. Um, we'll see Nimmo DHing as well, certainly in the future. I do like them playing around with that. Um, and DJ Stewart has been performing well, but I, I truly do think that any one of those bats that I just named in the outfield is a little bit of a better shot. Uh, than DJ Stewart. Now, obviously, a lefty's on the mound, right? So you're going to have a righty DH. Um, I like it, man. There's nothing that I would change about this lineup, and there's nothing that I would change about the way Carlos Mendoza has been approaching the lineup day in and day out. I think that there are other things to nitpick at with this offense, like this situational hitting, like we said on the Roundtable podcast yesterday. Like That's a little bit bigger of a worry for me rather than who's batting where in the lineup or who's playing what position, etc. So I like the personnel that are being trotted out there. Like I said in the round table as well, Carlos Mendoza, whoever's making these decisions, I'm assuming it's Carlos Mendoza at this point, um, they're playing the longevity of this season, right? They're giving guys the proper days off, whether that's just a complete day off, like we saw with Brett Beatty the other day, um, and he came in for a pinch hit with a single, or whether you're going to rotate that DH like we're talking about right now. I like that they're giving the guys the days off of their feet um, while, you know, I guess not playing in the field, that is. So um, that's something that I, I think they're playing to a T right now, and they're doing it very strategically. And, and like I said, shout out to the chat. I can't even see the chat right now. Um, I'm wearing my sunglasses. I literally just got in, but I was like, I can't miss it. <laughs> Mets are playing tremendous baseball, and we got to start this series off, right? So I wanted to get hyped, but I literally just walked in my door, set up my little tripod, and now I'm here. So a uh, shout-out to everyone being here. Yeah, yeah. I just rolled in 10 minutes before my stream, before the stream. And, I, of course, you know, I was trying to get the lineup together, and then I missed the, the record. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but <laughs> at least I didn't put, like, 0-12 or anything like that. That would have been worse. Uh, so – um. I wanted to update everybody uh, because me and Chris are going to be doing a post game today, not on YouTube. We're going to be doing it on the PSF app that we've talked about that we talked about uh, before the season started. So download the PSF app, the Pro Sports Fan app. We're going to be doing a post game show for about a half hour or so. Um, we're going to start it around 930, but whenever the game ends, we're going to give it a little grace period. And then we'll get ready and, and do that stream on the PSF app. So make sure you uh, download the PSF app. Uh, join the Mets group chat, and that's where the stream is. It'll take you right to it. Whatever streams live, you can find me and CP on the post game and the PSF app. So, all right. So, I want the game yesterday. I know we talked about it on the roundtable. Um, were there signs that you that you worried about a little bit that it was a two to one victory? The offense looked a little staggered, or you just taking it out as it was just a pitching duel and we got the win? How do you feel about that? Well, I know you said I know you weren't on the pregame yesterday. Um, I went solo and I talked about Cole Reagans and just how nasty of a pitcher he is. A guy that has a five pitch arsenal lefty from the mound. That's not your typical soft throwing lefty. He throws 96, 97 miles per hour, has a knuckle curve, has a slider, has a changeup, has a complete arsenal. So I knew in that pregame and everybody in the chat that was there for the pregame. Uh, can attest to that. And if you missed it, make, make sure you go back and watch it. I know that I was live during the uh, Doc Gooden ceremony. So I know I didn't really choose the best time to go live, but that's what my schedule had allowed me to do. So um, I, I mentioned that Cole Reagans was a legit like threat out there on the mound and not to take him lightly, no matter what the stats say or what his history has shown. Um, because I just know like looking at a savant page, like it's red everywhere and it pops out at you. So um, I knew the Mets were in for a tough day. Um, some of the situational hitting, like we just talked about, and we talked about in the round table, that's what kind of got me worried. I know Lindor there swing on first pitch, even though I didn't get to see it. Obviously Hector pointed it out on the round table, me pointing out the three Oh swing by Alvarez rolling over on an outside pitch that he really shouldn't have going at in that situation to shortstop. Um, things like that. It's like pitch selection for me. That's the biggest thing for me is pitch selection. That's what worried me a little bit. But other than that, it was really a clean game. The pitchers battle and Jose Buto kept this team in the game. Adam Adovino, Brooks Rayleigh did the same thing until Edwin Diaz could come in there and shut it down. I really wasn't worried about it too much. The offense 
had found a hot streak in the Braves series, did really well in the first two games against the Royals, and they put up a two spot in, in yesterday's game. It happens. It's That's the game of baseball, especially when you're facing such a tough pitcher like Cole Reagan. So hats off to Cole Reagan's really talented pitcher. Like I said, you got to give credit to the opposition as well because we can sit here and talk about what the Mets should have done and XYZ count or what they should have done with runners in scoring position, et cetera. And I know those numbers, the success rate hasn't been pretty so far, but you got to give credit to the opposition. So I think that definitely was a factor. And that's what I'll leave my answer at. So I, I'm not too worried about what we saw. No. Yeah, you know, you know, the only concern I have, even though we've been scoring runs, I just put it in the chat, they left a small country on base. Like, that, that's that been a problem. Like, I mean, there's games that we, we lost that we should have won, you know, leaving 12, 13, 14 men left on base. And I'm not saying score all of them, but, you know, three or four of those runs, you know, could be extra wins here. We could be a couple of games over 500, you know, instead of one game over 500. But, you know, besides us leaving a ton of men on base, I, I still love, and I think I said this before you came on, I like that the pitching has been picking up the offense. The offense has been picking up the pitching. Yesterday, Budo picked up the offense. He kept the Mets in the game until they struck. And that's why I love right now with this team is that we've seen the fight back that we've all talked about. I mean, we talked it to the cows come on home. Like that's all we talked about. We wanted to see fight. We've been seeing the fight. Dave, even when they're down four, five, six runs, they come back. They might not win them all, but they fight back. And I love the fact that this team is doing that. And if they continue this, they are a playoff team. Regardless of my, my crazy comment yesterday about looking at the division as a possibility as the Braves are very vulnerable, the fact of the matter is, aren't we a top 8, 9, 10 team in the NL, which is right on in line for a wild card spot, worst case scenario? We are. We should be uh, one of the three wild card teams the way yes, we're playing right. right now. Obviously, that can change in two weeks if we go on a loser streak, but what if we go on a five, six game winning streak? That's, Everything that, changes. That's that's a great point, Rob. It's about the fight, right? Especially after an 0-5 start, 1-5 start, like how this team has bounced back. I know 7-8 seven, seven and 7-8. and eight, The Mets have a chance to go 500 on the season today. Um, but really, it's about the process and the fight that this team has showed. Literally, we're only, what, 16 games into the season after tonight. It's really a small sample size. We'll see how they continue to fight. But I'm really proud with, like, no Kodai Senga, no G J.D. Martinez. Those are going to be bonus additions to this team when they do come back, right? We're talking about – we talked about the time frame for both of those guys yesterday on the roundtable. Um, no need to repeat ourselves. But, yeah, the fight is definitely what I love, absolutely. And um, I did see on the point just a little bit of uh, a side note here. Daniel pointing out the stance change with Lindor from last year to this year. I haven't checked that out, Daniel. As soon as I'm done with this stream, I promised you I was going to check it out yesterday. I didn't get a chance to check it out. Had some stuff to do. I will check it out. Um, but I believe he said not only from the left side, but I believe Daniel's comment yesterday was also about the right side ch uh, stance being changed up as well. So I'm going to go view his tweet as soon as this stream is done. But yeah, nonetheless, like I said, righty Lindor today. Always love to see that against the lefty uh, Martin uh, Perez. And listen, I, I think that the pitching matchups, I'm not sure if you talked about the pitching matchups overall in this season. I was live with Ant on the Subway to Shade podcast yesterday talking about the probables for this series. I really like where the Mets are at in terms of the advantage that they have in the pitching category, especially the pitching category in this yeah. series. So I don't know if you talked about that. I apologize. I, I spoke about it briefly, but if you want to elaborate on it a little more, you can. No, I just think that the Mets have the, all their guys going, right? You talk about Adrian Hauser setting the tone today. You'd hope. Uh, you talk about Jose Quintana, the guy who's been the anchor so far, that veteran that you expect to get the Mets in ball games. We said it countless of times. Has looked very impressive his last two times out. And then I believe it's Luis Severino uh, capping off the series, if I'm not mistaken. So Luis Severino also the last two times out has looked night and day different from that start in the Milwaukee series. So I'm very, very happy um, with the way this rotation has performed so far. No complaints there. Obviously, everyone has to talk about the longevity of the starting rotation. Um, everyone not named Jose Buto going six plus innings in the ball game, But <laughs> listen, I know it's early. This bullpen is highly capable of picking up the missing pieces. And David Stern, good job in rotating the Syracuse pieces up 
to fill those innings and kill those innings when needed to be. So we have a good baseball mind and a president of baseball operations. Our Pobo, David Stearns, is going to handle that, right? Um, the rotation is what it is. All I ask of the rotation, I'm not even asking to go six innings at this point. Like, if they do, great. It's a bonus on top. We've been dealing with five innings max for as long as we can remember at this point. Just keep them in the ball game while you're out there. That's all I got. That's all I want. Yeah, ab absolutely. And D just said, you know, the big thing with uh, with uh, Hauser is that he needs that sharp sinker. If the sinker's low, knee high in the zone, he's gonna have a good night. If it's uh, above the knees and near the near a uh, belt high, he's gonna have a long night. So that's one thing that I did want to actually double up on when you said what you're concerned about and shifting over from the offense to the rotation. They have looked good so far, like I just said. But the one thing I do worry about in this rotation, particularly with Sean Manaya and Luis Severino, is those put away pitches. Jose Quintana as well, but he's proven that he's able to get outs and he doesn't need that put away pitch. Adrian Hauser is not going to strike out many guys as well, but he utilizes that ground ball very heavily in his arsenal and he gets a lot of ground ball outs. But guys like Sean Manaya and Luis Severino that I think depend on the strikeout a little bit more when they're at the very peak of their game, right? We've seen it already so far this season, those put away pitches. Are they on, like you saw it with Sean Manaya's last start? The backdoor slider wasn't working. He wasn't able to look, put batters away when he was in a pitcher's friendly count and he was ahead in the count. What are those put away pitches? Uh, what do they look like? So, not so much today. Like I said, Adrian Hauser usually pitches to contact, but definitely when Luis Severino pitches in game three, we'll talk about it. I'll re mention that in the pregame at that point, but definitely keep an eye on that, especially when Sean Manaya and Luis Severino take the mound. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, the, again, the pitching matchup, I, I agree with you, is in our favor uh, right now. Um, again, Hauser, you know, is going to set the tone tonight. Um, Steven brought up something that um, I did a lot last year over the last two years, uh, the in-game live streams. Uh, I'm going to start doing that again. I, I'm in the moving process. I just moved and I'm still setting everything up. I, I want my setup to be a little bit better than when, you know, a curtain behind me right now. But uh, when I get everything together and I get a bigger desk because I didn't even take my desk, I kind of got like a, a food table here that I'm setting up everything on. So it's, it's all over the place right now. I got my cat biting my wire. So it, it's a big mess right now. So once I get everything set, I will be doing in-game live streams that I know basically made my channel uh, what it is. Uh, so I'll make sure that uh, Chris is on with me and Hayden as well. I know uh, Hayden did a, a lot of games with me two years ago. So Chris, if you're always welcome to join a watch party. Let me know. And if I'm available, I'm down. I'm down to talk baseball during the game for sure. Absolutely. All right, guys. So game's about to start in a couple of minutes. I'm going to hand it over to Chris with his final words and let everybody know what you go, what's going on with your channel, buddy. Yeah, final words here. Let's get a win. Let's start the series off right. Let's continue to play fundamental baseball. Uh, hopefully the situational hitting gets a little bit better. Like I said, I'm not going to nitpick. The The Mets are playing great, great baseball right now. That's the bottom line. I want that to continue. And hopefully the starting pitchers can will us and keep, in these, uh, keep us in these ball games. So like I said, Rob, I appreciate it. I apologize. Running all over the place a little late in my day today. Still got the sunnies on. Just walking through the door. Had to pop onto the stream. But make sure you subscribe to the channel. CPNY Sports over on YouTube. Follow me over on well. A lot of streams coming up for you all. Nick's post-game live. Obviously, we just got the two seed. The playoffs are starting. The first game's going to be on Saturday. Just was announced, I believe, yesterday. So I'm hyped for that. Uh, we'll see who we get. That's another topic of discussion, whether it's going to be Philly or Miami. And then we got the Rangers, too, on the channel. Blue Shirts Banner. We're also going live uh, for the post games for the New York Rangers games, this playoff series as well. Like I said, in addition to what I already do for the New York Mets with you and with everybody else that I talk Mets baseball with on the channel, and that's going to obviously be the mainstay here. Also, check out the Knicks uh, post game streams and also the Blue Shirts Banner post game streams. That's it. Subscribe, hit those thumbs up, and let's get a win today. Absolutely. Before we go, Chris, who do you want, Miami or the Sixers? I'm a, I'm gonna go with the Sixers, man. I don't want to see playoff. Ooh, all right. I know Embiid is gonna be locked in for the playoffs. I understand that, but I believe he'll get hurt like he always does during a series. Yeah, and I believe in the two New York Knicks centers, man. Mitchell Robinson, Isaiah Harnstein, yeah. that Tampa. So, so give me the Sixers over Miami. Hopefully, that doesn't come back to bite me. Absolutely. Once again, that is CP. Check out his YouTube channel, Knicks, Rangers, Mets. And make sure tonight around 930, download the PSF app. Me and Chris are going to be doing a post game after the Mets-Pirates game. So with that said, let's get that first W of the series.
Let's go Mets. Have a good night. See you next time, guys. Good night. Good night.